Hello everyone, welcome to another video from Bun Med where we discuss concise medical knowledge you can fit inside of a bun. Today we will be discussing the classification of hemolytic diseases as well as giving a broad introduction and also discussing a quick case presentation. So let's start off by thinking about what hemolytic disease is and trying to define it. And in this case, it's when a process, whether that be an external or internal process, results in the destruction or the lysis, which means splitting up of red blood cells. Now, as always, it's helpful to classify hemolytic disease in order to try and find out why a patient has having these symptoms. So the first way we can do it is through identifying if it's an immune mediated or non-immune mediated disease. And what I mean by this is that the patient may have um, an immune response to their red blood cells which is causing the destruction of uh, the, the red blood cells. However, it may also be non-immune. And an example here would be something like a heart valve, where mechanical heart valves can cause physical shearing of the red blood cells. Next, we have um, hereditary or acquired causes. So in the case of hereditary, this means that the disease has been inherited from the parents, and an example here would be something like G6PD deficiency. And this is an X-linked recessive condition in which a patient develops um, increased levels of oxidative stress due to uh, the missing G6PD enzyme. Then we have acquired causes. An example here would be something like a blood transfusion where the patient has been given the incorrect blood due to an ABO mismatch causing uh, antibodies to be produced against that blood and therefore we have uh, an acquired cause of hemolytic disease. The final way we can classify a hemolytic disease is whether it's intravascular or extravascular and what this means is uh, essentially refers to the location. So are the red blood cells being destroyed within the vasculature or are they being destroyed outside of the vasculature? So in this case, it would refer to organs such as the spleen, the liver, and the bone marrow. And here you will find macrophages, uh, which will result in the destruction and uh, phagocyte phagocytose, those red blood cells. Okay, so let's start by moving into a case. And in this co uh, consideration, we're going to be looking at a pragmatic approach. So we have a 58 year old male who attends his GP complaining of feeling tired and short of breath. His wife also commented on his skin looking yellower than usual and on further questioning you find that he has had darker urine and mentions there is some loss of appetite. So the question here is what key information can you take from the history, what might you find on examination and how could you investigate this patient? Of course, this is a slightly lengthy question, so if you'd like to pause the video and jot down a few notes, um, feel free to do so, and I will continue uh, the video. Okay, so we do a couple of, we do take some history, and then we start to think about investigating, the, uh, sorry, examining the patient. And we find that um, on general inspection, we can confirm the patient is jaundiced, they have some scleral ictrus, and breathlessness uh, on rest, on resting. They also have a lump on the left upper quadrant of the abdomen, and when you examine the abdomen, you find that this might be suggestive of splenomegaly. Okay, and then we do some investigations. So here are the investigations listed. Again, if you'd like to pause the video and have a think about what might be abnormal here, and why it might be abnormal, so see if you can link it back to the pathology. Uh, and then we have on the uh, right hand side a uh, blood film of the patient, uh, so uh, think about what that might show you. Okay, and what I've done here is highlighted the um, main abnormalities and we will focus on these in a moment. Okay, so starting off with a question, um, which of the following is the most likely diagnosis for this patient? Is it sickle cell disease, G6PD deficiency, autoimmune hemolytic anemia, or hereditary spherocytosis? Feel free to go back to the case um, and having a reread through it, and um, I will continue the video. Okay, 
So in this circumstance, the most likely diagnosis is autoimmune hemolytic anemia. So that's everything for this video. Um, since we like to keep our content concise, you can find the explanation to the answer for this case in our next video. Check out the hyperlink in the description. Thank you for watching the video and feel free to leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, it would massively help us if you could like and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.